Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 To be in the house of God. It was David that wrote in the Bible. He said that it is better to be in the house of God one time mm -hmm. than to be anywhere 10,000 times. Yes. So I'm so thankful that we have the privilege and the honor to preach the word of God today. Before I get to the word of God, I do want to give honor to my pastor, Pastor Silas. He's also known as my dad. I want to thank him and, and my family for allowing me to speak today. It's good to see everybody here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to jump into the word of God because I don't want to take a lot of time today. But I believe God gave me a word. God gave me something in my heart that he wanted me to preach on today. So if you would all pay attention and let God have his way. And let God speak to us this great evening. So we're going to get to the word of God. We're going to be reading from the book of Romans. Chapter 8, starting from verse 35. Romans chapter 8. We're going to start from verse 35. And then we're going to read to verse 39. Romans 8, 35. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or curse or so? As it, as it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sick, as sick for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquered through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor height, nor angels, nor principalities, no power, no thing present, no thing to come. Verse 39, the last verse, the Bible says that no height, no death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us mm -hmm. from the love of God, Amen. which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. From this whole moment that I have with you guys, I want to talk about the love of Jesus. Amen. I want to talk to you guys about the love of Jesus. We found the Apostle Paul, he was writing to the book of Romans, he was writing to the church. And I felt like he got to a point that the Romans or the church, they felt like that the love of God was not there. They felt like they couldn't be loved. So, so Paul asked a great question. He said, who shall mm. separate us from the love of God? He goes on and he lists everything, everything that might, that might stop you from loving, from God loving you. He goes on and he lists everything that you, that you might think that might be able to separate us. The Paul said, such a blessing. He said, I won't separate us. He said, persecution won't even separate us. He said, feminine mm -hmm. won't separate us. He even said, the nakedness mm -hmm. won't separate us. But the greatest thing about this, about the scriptures is Paul goes to a verse and he said, not even death mm -hmm. can separate us from the love of God. Yes. I have to tell you that there's nothing in this world, mm -hmm. there's nobody in this world that can ever stop God from loving you. Mm -hmm. And the, the thing about human is, we always want to put somebody down. Mm -hmm. We always want to talk about bad about people. And I feel that like sometimes people complain about others. But even no matter how much they talk about you, mm -hmm. no matter how much they put you down, God will never stop loving you. Amen. And I want you to understand that, that nothing can, can stop God from loving you. Amen. So Paul was running to the book of Romans and he lists everything on the list that might be something that might be an exception that, that might separate us from the love of Jesus. But, but he said there's nothing that might separate God from loving you. But, but he said death won't separate us from the love of God. And my mind as a humankind, our knowledge, our mind, I began to think that even death can't stop God from loving you, which means that even when we die, mm. even though it, sometimes it's not our choice, but, but the Bible says that death is going to stop God from loving you. Mm. So no matter, even, even the people that have died, God, would, he didn't stop loving them when they died. Mm. Even though they, 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 they chose a, a destination or the life that they wanted to live after life, but even through everything that we go in life, God still loves us. Amen. And that's a powerful Amen. thing that not even death mm. can stop Jesus mm. from loving you. Amen. Verse 39 says, No height, no death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, mm. which is in mm. Christ Jesus. Mm. I want to tell you that the true love of, of, of what we what need in this world right now, mm. that the love is going to be inside of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says that, that the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Everything was and everything is and everything will always be in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in classes 2 and 8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vent this sin after the tradition of man, after the movement of the world and not after Christ. For in him, talking about Jesus Christ, dwelleth mm -hmm. all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Mm -hmm. And ye are complete in him, mm -hmm. which is the head of all principality, 
and power. The Bible is letting us know that everything, principalities and powers and, and everything that was created was inside Jesus mm -hmm. Christ. Jesus has all the power. The Bible says that he was given the, all the powers and all the authority from heaven and earth and under earth. Everything was given to Jesus because Jesus got all the power. And the love of God is in Jesus Christ. Because when Jesus went to Calvary, the Bible tells us in 1 Peter that, that Jesus literally he was walking to Calvary. And the Bible let us know that he was carrying the sins of the world on the back of his back. The Bible says that Jesus, when he went on the cross, that every sin that you ever committed, every sin that you ever did in your mind, in your word, or your body, that Jesus was carrying in the back of his back. Amen. Which means that Jesus was so heavy, and with everything for the word, the sin of the world was in the back of his back. He was carrying when he was born on the cross. That's why the Bible says that the love of God was manifested in the man Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus died for our sins, and that's where true love comes from. Amen. Jesus didn't have to die for you. Jesus didn't have to die for me. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says that for God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten mm -hmm. son, that whosoever believed in him mm -hmm. should not perish but have everlasting life. Mm -hmm. I have to tell somebody that love, you will only find love in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nobody can love you more than Jesus. Nobody can take care of you like Jesus. Nobody can show you kindness and mercy and grace like Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when you find yourself in love with Jesus, the Bible they say that Jesus' his love will come on you because Jesus is full of love. Mm -hmm. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. Mm -hmm. And he's full of life. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that they will come to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they might have life. Mm -hmm. And they might have life more abundantly. Mm -hmm. Then this word, the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 2, he says, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, mm -hmm. and bear witness, and so unto you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Life was manifested. Man manifestation means something that is not tangible, something that is not touchable. When manifestation, when that means the thing that is not touchable, tangible, or seen, manifestation means that it becomes reality. It becomes something that you can touch. The Bible says that God is a spirit. The Bible says that no man has seen God at any time, that you can never see God, but God himself, that same spirit that is in heaven and everywhere, was manifested in the man Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says, for there's one God, one faith. If Jesus became God, Jesus left heaven, the glory of God and the angels that would worship him. Every day and every night, he left all the glory, he left the power, and he left everything that was good from heaven so he could come down to the world that is evil, that is full of darkness because of you and I. Amen. And that's the love of Jesus. The love of Jesus is something that we, as a humankind, we might not be able to understand it. And can I tell you, we were never meant to understand the love of God, but you were created to experience the love Amen. of God. Amen. You might not be able to understand, Amen. but God became so you can experience mm. the life of Jesus. Amen. First John 1 and 2 said, life was manifested. And, and John mm. said that I have seen it and I can bear witness mm. that life was manifested. Mm. John tells us that he seen life mm -hmm. become a manifestation. Mm. And John was telling that I was teaching class the other day day in this local church of a youth group and I was telling those kids mm -hmm. that the life was manifested through Jesus mm -hmm. and I gave them how, how, how I was how I was born and sometime in life in my life there was things that I did that was not right this stuff there's a way that I talked that I should have never talked there's places that I went that mm -hmm. I should never talk but I told them that after I met Jesus mm -hmm. that the Jesus that he gave me life and gave me life abundantly mm -hmm. and today if you don't know who Jesus is he's a God that loves you he want to give you life abundantly right. he want to take you heaven with you. Don't let today mm. be a day that you don't experience mm. the love of Jesus. Yeah. John said love was manifest and he has seen it. John 14 and 20 says, in the day that you should know that I am in mm -hmm. my Father he, me and I in you. Jesus was telling us that the Father mm -hmm. was in him and he was telling us that in me, Jesus, that I'm going to be in you also. Mm -hmm. So when you fully understand who Jesus was and who he represented and how he, he walked in his life, you can understand that I need more of Jesus today mm -hmm. than I ever did in my life. Mm -hmm. Because Jesus comes to give you life and to give you hope mm -hmm. and to give you peace. Amen. Jesus 
where the word and the Bible said that the word was from the beginning mm -hmm. and the word was with God and the word became God. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us that there is Jesus, the love of God. Mm -hmm. Genesis 11 and 1. Genesis 11 and 1 tell us in the whole earth, in the whole earth was of one language mm -hmm. and one speech. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass as the journey from the east that they found a plan in the land of Sinai and they dwelt there. Mm -hmm. And they said one and they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them throughout it. Mm -hmm. And they have brick for stone and slime had they murdered. Mm -hmm. Verse number four, and the Bible said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower, whose top may reach to heaven, mm -hmm. and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole world. Verse number five, and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower mm -hmm. with the children of men built it. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they all have one language. And in this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. Go to let us go down, and then come for the language, that they might not understand one another's speech. Verse 8, So the Lord scattered them upon the face of all earth, and they left them to build the city. Verse number 9, last one, Therefore is the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did that confirm the language of all the earth. Mm -hmm. And from there the Lord scattered them abroad upon the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us this great story of all these people back in Genesis, back in the beginning. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that there was all in one mind. Mm -hmm. And they spoke one language. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to make this big tower. The Bible calls it Bible. And they were trying to reach the top of the heaven so they can figure out who God is. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that as they were doing it, they said, let us. Talking about those people, they were trying to make themselves a name. See, they wasn't trying to glorify God by building a tower. That's what the Bible says that God said, let us go down mm -hmm. and see what these people are doing because they speak one language. Mm -hmm. And God even Himself said that these people, since they speak one language, they can do everything. They yes. can do anything because they spoke one language. Mm -hmm. They spoke each other, they, had, they knew each other's intention mm -hmm. and what they wanted to do. So, God in heaven, He sent those people that was one. But see, just because you want with people don't mean you're doing a great thing. Mm -hmm. That's why the book of Acts, it tells us that those men of apostles, mm -hmm. they were in the upper room, one mind, one accord. But see, they had a great intention, they had a great purpose. Because the Bible says he told them to go in Jerusalem mm -hmm. to wait for the Holy Spirit to come. Mm -hmm. So when they went to the upper room, there was one mind, mm -hmm. one accord, mm -hmm. but they had a great thing they wanted to see. Mm -hmm. But in the book of Genesis, we find these people, mm -hmm. they spoke one language, mm -hmm. but they did not want to magnify God. They didn't want to take, put God above. They wanted to figure out who God was. And God doesn't want you to figure out everything. Mm -hmm. If God wanted you to figure out everything, then we wouldn't would need no God. Mm -hmm. Because in our own mind, in our conscience, we would know everything. We would know what to do and everything. That's why God sometimes don't want us to know everything. Mm -hmm. Because when you get to a point that you don't know everything, that's when you can call on the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And he can come down and help you. Mm -hmm. So today, if you don't understand everything, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You were not created to know everything, but you were created to understand and to love the one that knows everything, which is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So these people, they spoke one language, mm -hmm. but they didn't have the right intention. They didn't have the right things that God wanted to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So God came down in the earth and he destroyed the tower. Mm -hmm. And from that day, they called the tower Babel. Because those people, even though they were in one mind, one accord, mm -hmm. they weren't doing the right thing in the eyes of God. Mm -hmm. So today, I want to encourage every single one of us. Mm -hmm. Just because we come together, I see churches everywhere, they come together, mm -hmm. but they think about something else. They think where they're going to go to eat afterwards. They're mm -hmm. thinking what they're going to do on Monday. But what would happen mm -hmm. if all the churches came together on a Sunday mm -hmm. and they started lifting up the name of Jesus mm -hmm. and they started calling on His name and giving Him prayers and thanks? Mm -hmm. God would come down and He would send the Spirit mm -hmm. and we would Come change, but when churches come together, they might be in one building, they might be in one place, but if their heart is not right, God cannot move. Because what God wants, He wants a church that will come together thinking about how good He is and how great God is. When you start thinking about how great God is, God can come down and He can minister, He can move. Because that's how God wants us to be. So just because we come together don't mean God mm. is right there within us. But it's because when we come, the Bible says, well, there's two or three yeah. or more gathered in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We got to be gathered in the name of Jesus, mm. the name that is above every name, mm. the name that got all the power, the name yes. that got all the authority. Yeah. Yeah. He get in the name of Jesus. Yeah. He can come down. He can change somebody's life. Mm. He can heal the lepers. He can 
up and right in the eye, he can perform miracles, he can move, he can heal, he can do miracles. Because we have come together in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us that those men were one. But they put their mind to the wrong thing. Mm. These people were one, mm. but for the wrong reason. Mm. God helped us to have unity mm. and, and become one, but for the right reason. Yes. Mm. Psalm 133 and 1 says, and Psalm of the grid of David, David said, How good mm. and how present it is for brethren mm. to dwell together mm. in unity. Mm. See, David wrote down, he said, It is good, it is present. Mm. It is something great when, when brethren, when brothers and sisters mm. come together for the right reason, mm. which is Jesus Christ. Mm. Can I tell you, I don't come to church for nobody else. Mm. I come to church so I can experience God's grace. Mm. I come to church so I can experience God's mercy. Mm. I come to church so God can forgive me. Because sometimes we worry about so what other people are doing mm. that we might not be able to understand what God wants to do to us. Yeah. Mm. Before we ever go to the Word or restore that are lost to those that don't know Jesus, we got to make sure that God is working on the inside of me. Because if God can change my heart, then I can go tell everybody else that God, if God can do it for me, God can do it for you too. Amen. So today Amen. I encourage all of us to let God start working on the inside of us. Amen. How good and how precious it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. God doesn't want you to know everything, mm. but He wants you to trust Him in everything mm -hmm. that you do. Mm -hmm. And I'll be, I'm getting ready to close. Mm -hmm. It was never based on your performance mm -hmm. that made Jesus love you. Mm -hmm. It is not how well you can perform. Mm -hmm. It's not how great you can preach. It's not how great you can teach. It's mm -hmm. not how great you can sing mm -hmm. that made Jesus love you. Mm -hmm. Because if it was based on performance, Jesus wouldn't love any of us. Because there's no way we can preach good enough for God to love us. Mm -hmm. There's no way we can sing great enough for God to love us. It's not based on performance. Mm -hmm. And if we ever understand that everything inside of a church is not a competition. Mm -hmm. It's not about how great they're doing and how great we're doing. Mm -hmm. But it's about that God loves us no matter who we are. Mm -hmm. No matter what we have done. Because mm -hmm. it is not based on how great we perform. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, if it was based on how great I perform, God would not love me. Because mm -hmm. I make mistakes every day. I, I, I don't perform me sometimes. Sometimes I come short, but it is not based on my performance, it is based on who I am. Yeah. It is based on how God created me. Yeah. And if God created me the way I am, He's gonna love me through everything that I go in every season that I'm in. Yeah. It is not based on your performance that God loves you, yeah. it is not based on how great you do and what you can do and everything you can do. Yeah. But God loves you no yeah. matter what. Yeah. 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 Because that's who God is. The Bible says that God is. Love. Yes. The Bible doesn't say that God shows love and everything, but love mm. is who God is. Yes. It's, it's his identity. It's, it's who he was. Yes. It's who he is. And the Bible says that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes. And, and if God was love 2,000 years ago, God is still love today. Yes. But God does not change. God is still the same God that moved mountains. Mm -hmm. He's still the same God that created every every creation. Mm -hmm. He's the same God that put everything in place. Mm -hmm. And if He's still the same God, we believe. Mm -hmm. I still believe that God is love today. Yes. Amen. God is love. Amen. And the Bible says that God Amen. is love. Amen. And as I get ready to close, mm -hmm. I want you to understand that there's nothing in this world mm -hmm. that would ever separate mm -hmm. love God awesome. from loving you. Amen. That's why Paul wrote all those scriptures from birth to birth. Mm -hmm. There's no feminine, no persecution, no feminine, mm -hmm. no nakedness. Mm -hmm. And he even said no death, no heart, no any other creature yes. can be able to separate us mm -hmm. from the love of God. Mm -hmm. God loves you. There's nothing you can do that can stop God from loving you. And today my, my prayer is let's, God, let's have God mm -hmm. have his way in our heart. If we can all bow our hands, let's pray. Yes. Jesus, we thank you for this great day. Amen. Lord, we thank you for a great day that you have given us today. Amen. God, I pray over this congregation. I pray over this great church. Amen. God, I pray that you will move in our hearts. God, I pray that you will touch us, God. Mm -hmm. Lord, I pray that you will show us who, who you really are and the love that you were presented when you were on earth and the, mm -hmm. and the love that you still presented while you were in heaven, God. You gave us the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. so he can guide us and lead us and talk to us, God. I pray for those that might feel depressed right now. I pray for those that might have anxiety, mm -hmm. those that might feel lonely right now, those that might feel like they're not lovable or, or, or movable or touchable. But God, I pray, God, that you will come down today and minister 
to those that, that need the love of God. Minister to them, God, that are depressed and need God. God, I pray that this word of God we just heard, that it will, we will not just be healed only by God, that we will stop performing over how you call us to perform. God, I pray that the love that you showed us in the book of the Bible and the love that you still showing us through your spirit. Mm -hmm. God, I pray that the same love that you show us, that we will have the same compassion and the same passion yes. that we will show the world the love of Jesus, that we might be able to reach the dying world that is full of darkness, that we can carry the love that you have given us so we can love other people. And I pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ and the church say amen. Yes. Amen.